Hello and welcome to the second episode on FM sound design on the Sonicware Liven XFM. Today we're going to be covering the library sound engine, which is, by most accounts, the simplest of the sound engines available. Let's first turn the device on. Hopefully you saw the previous episode indicating um, the general layout, the features and the panel, but a quick overview. This is a four operator, six voice, four part multi timbral FM synthesizer. Today we're going to talk about the library sound engine. So first we will select the library engine. The library engine is an engine that allows us to pick one of the presets on device. The presets are arranged into banks and sounds within those banks. So each bank has a name. Notice at the end we move on to some empty banks. So we have three empty banks. Each bank has a selection of 16 sounds available. Some of the banks will have some of their latter slots empty, these TP slots. So these are our init patches. Note that you can initialize the patches in FM sound design mode, a feature absent on some other devices. So I'm going to scan through, maybe find a pad sound, could be interesting. Okay, so I think this is a good sound for us to be working with. So let's have a look at the knobs that we have to control this. The first knob is the attack knob. So when I turned it down, you notice that we have a punchy, more percussive attack. At the zero point, we have a softer attack. If we turn it all the way up, we have a long, slow attack. I'm going to set it back to its original position. Next knob lets us adjust the tone of this sound. So tone actually refers to how much feedback the FM operators are facing. You don't actually need to understand this, and these engines do not require a real understanding of FM synthesis. But it suffices to say that tone corresponds in some degree to the brightness of the sound. So let's try. So that's turned all the way down, and 50%, all the way up. I like it there. Let's imagine that I'd like a little more attack, so I'm going to turn the attack up. So I think the next thing to look at is probably the filter. In this case, since it's a pad, I imagine we're going to use a low pass filter, probably in the rising and falling mode. The filter envelope that is available, they are relatively simplistic. You only have one parameter, which is time. So they provide three different shapes. One of them simply falls over that time. One of them rises during that time. One of them rises and falls symmetrically in the amount of time specified. So first, let's set the envelope depth to zero, and the time can be zero, and we'll just try the cutoff. Um, the resonance has some initial value, so I'm going to set it to zero. So let's... So you can hear with no resonance. Nothing particularly interesting is happening with the movement, so let's turn a little bit of resonance on. So now we have a bit of a formant sound. But what we're really interested here is getting the envelope providing some additional value. So let's turn the cutoff down. Let's turn the depth up, um, let's see how far, a little bit. So the time is minimum, you can hear that plucky sound. That's the envelope. Okay, I think that's sounding okay. I would like the envelope motion to end with a little more brightness in the sound, so I'm going to turn that up. Let's try again. 
Okay, I quite like that. Maybe um, I think the resonance is good. One thing to be aware, I mentioned previously, the filter is paraphonic with respect to each track. So what that means is there is one filter shared across all the voices. So if I have the depth set very high, um, you'll note you can hear that closing sound as the filter cutoff closes. So unfortunately, um, we're better off keeping the depth relatively low. Sounds reasonable. Probably open the filter a little more. Note that I'm using the onboard keyboard. I could be using this externally over MIDI. Um, when used over MIDI, we have access to the velocity parameter, which is very useful for expression in FM synthesizers. Um, for now, we can control the velocity using the velocity knob. It's a shift function of the speed knob. I'm going to lock shift on. So let's set velocity to maximum. So hopefully you can hear that not only the volume is changing, but to some extent the timbre is changing too. So the next thing that will be interesting to look at is the LFO. So the LFO, um, to hear the depth easily, it's easier to turn the rate up. So I've turned the rate up to roughly 50% rate. Now I can set the amount of LFO sent to the pitch and to the filter. So first I'm going to try pitch. So just a little bit of modulation of the pitch. Now to the filter. Again, subtle, but now turn the rate down. So I think that sounds reasonable. Um, next option here is adjusting the release time. If I turn this right down, you can hear the sound's release is significantly truncated at about 50%. Still short. Maybe I'll make the sound a little brighter. Open the filter a little more. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I think the only thing that's missing perhaps is a little bit of an effect on there. Uh, the obvious effect for a pad is a reverb. So here is a reverb. I'm going to set the volume of that reverb to 50%. I'm going to set the speed, which is the tail of the reverb length, to somewhere in the middle. And now I'm going to use the secondary function of this knob to set the effect send amount. So at the moment it's zero. So now we have um, gone from an initial library sound preset to something which has got a customized attack, a customized tone and brightness, a new filter added, and a filter which has an envelope. We have some pitch LFO, we have some filter LFO. I've adjusted the release and I've added a little bit of reverb. So I'll just play for a moment. So hopefully that illustrates that we can relatively significantly transform the sound from the panel without digging into any of the complicated FM sound editing features. Note that all of these parameters that I've been setting can be automated on a per step basis, including having a different patch per step. So we have a lot of flexibility for making complicated sequences. And even though we only have those six voices and those four timbres, for doing things like drums, we could set a different sound for every single step, allowing us to incorporate our kicks, snare, hats, and so forth. In any case, I think that explains the library engine to a reasonable degree. And I will sign off for now, and we will come back and discuss the XLab engine and all of the features that that 
offers. Thanks for listening.